17 remakes of badass 80s movies that are in the works now. The 80s was an era of some incredible classics that have left a mark in cinematic history. Such was the charm of these amazing movies that the makers attempted numerous remake attempts to cash in on the popularity. The remakes have not always impressed the fans and rarely have they lived up to the standards of the original. However, some of these attempts did strike a chord with the audiences and even now, some of the famous movie projects from the 80s are in the process of being remade. In this video, we have assembled a lot of what we think you will consider to be interesting remakes from the golden era. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Candyman. Helen is a skeptic grad student doing some research on local legends and myths about Candyman, a one-armed murderous soul with a hook for a hand. He appears if his name is said five times before a mirror, and the people in the area are afraid of him. Helen doesn't believe in the stories and tries to summon Candyman. However, soon a series of horrible murders point to the fact that the legend might be true. The spooky story of a vindictive spirit was written and directed by Bernard Rose. It was quite a hit with the horror fans, and this prompted notable horror hybrid mastermind Jordan Peele to try out a spiritual sequel of the same. It was set to be released in the fall of 2020, but the COVID pandemic delayed the process. Not much is known about the plot, but from the trailer and teaser, we have been able to decipher that Anthony, the baby that Helen saved from Candyman in the original film, returns to the region and is haunted by Candyman again. If rumors are to be believed, Helen too is part of the story, and Tony Todd, the veteran actor who played Candyman back in the day, is set to reprise his role. The direction is being handled by Nia DaCosta, who made her directorial debut with Little Woods and proved her skills. Yaya Abdul-Mateen II has been cast as Anthony, and other actors include Coleman Domingo and Nathan Stewart Jarrett. If there is one thing that could be said with certainty, it is that Jordan Peele is disregarding all prior sequels of Candyman and carving his own path to further the lore. Highlander Connor MacLeod was born in the Highlands of Scotland in 1518 and was an immortal swordsman who could only be killed by beheading. One of his ruthless opponents chases him across time and in present New York City, an antique shop owner discovers that he was Connor MacLeod from the 16th century. He faces his opponent one more time as the two fight for the spiritual ability to know everything. Can Connor win it once and for all? The fantasy adventure movie attained cult status over time, and fans have loved the action-packed, thrilling content that keeps viewers on the edge of their seats. With a star-studded cast of Sean Connery and Christopher Lambert, the movie is treasured by many and is ripe for a modern remake. We have got the news that a remake of the classic hit from the 80s is about to hit the floors. The responsibility has been burdened on the capable shoulders of Chad Stahelski, the John Wick director. According to him, the ongoing global pandemic hasn't slowed down the production of the remake, but we believe that the movie is still in the early stages. As for Chad Stahelski, it would be the first time that he would direct something that is not John Wick related, but his wealth of experience would come in handy. After all, we don't want our beloved memories of Highlander to be trashed, do we? The Howling Karen White is used by the police to track down a serial killer who has been molesting her through phone calls. Although the killer is shot, Karen is mentally disturbed from the trauma and sent to recover in a remote mountain resort. However, something seems to be amiss with the residents of the region. Karen soon makes a terrifying discovery about the identity of the people who may not be what they seem. Despite being an engaging werewolf movie, The Howling is sometimes overlooked because other classics like An American Werewolf in London released in the same year. Joe Dante directed the spine-chilling horror story, and there were some genuinely scary moments coupled with impressive special effects. Who wouldn't want such a gem to be remade now? 
Well, your wishes have been answered, and it is heard that Andy Muschietti, the man who directed it, is in charge of proceedings. He is believed to be in negotiations with Netflix to remake this werewolf thriller. He is just the right man for the job too, because if we have observed anything from IT and IT Chapter 2, it is his ability to toy with suggestive horror. Andy also emphasizes on human characters and their psychological horror to raise the spook quotient, and that is just what we want for someone remaking The Howling. However, with news coming in about Andy Muschietti being signed for the Flash movie under Warner Bros., it might be some time before we see this movie go on the floors. You're gonna wish they never cut you from your mother's womb. Blade. The movie is based in a world where humans and vampires coexist, and Blade is a half-vampire, half-mortal man. He is on a mission to eliminate the evil vampires led by Deacon, who plans a nasty surprise for the humans with a takeover. Blade must suppress his urge for human blood and fight relentlessly to keep the balance. He is supported by his loyal mentor Whistler, and it is up to the two to put an end to Deacon's nightmarish scheme. For many, this is one of their favorite vampire slaying movies, and the perfect example of how a comic book flick should be made. The fans of the movie were in a treat for when Marvel Studios announced the reboot attempt during their Phase 4 presentation at the San Diego Comic Con. If speculations have any truth in them, you could expect October 7th, 2022 to be the day of release for this film. It would be the perfect complement to the Halloween season, and the preparations are strong to make this a success. Meher Shala Ali, the Oscar winner, has been roped in to play Blade, and we couldn't imagine anyone better suited to replace Wesley Snipes for the role. The director hasn't been announced yet, and we hope that the right man is assigned for the job of leading the movie to the heights of the original classic. Resident Evil The powerful Umbrella Corporation has a secret research facility used to develop genetically engineered drugs to be used as biological weapons and for medical purposes. A terrible situation builds up when a virus escapes the facility and turns the staff into hungry, vicious zombies. The corporation sends in a military unit to seal the facility and shut down the computer before getting out. They meet Alice, a mysterious woman suffering from memory loss due to exposure to nerve gas. Can they successfully escape from the facility that is under the siege of the zombies? Movies based on video games are often looked down upon, but that wasn't the case with Resident Evil. Even with a dozen games, six live action movies, and plentiful fan fiction, we cannot seem to get enough of this franchise. The previous six films were written and directed by Paul Anderson, and he set the standards pretty high. This 1998 survival horror story is all set to be remade by Constantine Film, and their spokesperson had stated that the story will take you back to the fateful night when it all started. It will stay faithful to the Capcom games and allow you to relive the experience one more time. The cast is pretty exciting and is a powerhouse of talent with the likes of Robbie Amell, Kaya Scodelario, and Hannah John Kamen in key roles. With Johannes Roberts as the writer and director, you could expect flashbacks of the terrifying visceral experience you had when you first played the games or watched the original movie. Evil Dead Rise A group of five friends who are college students go for a vacation in an isolated cabin in the middle of nowhere. They find the area to be spooky and something unnatural about the surroundings grabs their attention. In the cellar, they discover an audio tape along with old scripts. Upon playing the audio, they unknowingly summon demons that possess them and cause gory mayhem. Only one of them manages to survive the slaughter that takes place after the legion of spirits and demons are released. Sam Raimi set the cash boxes jingling with the unbelievable success of the film The Evil Dead. It soon spawned two sequels, a remake and a TV show. Now a reboot attempt to preserve the glory of the original is set to go down the floors. In an interview, Bruce Campbell divulged some details to offer insights into the upcoming remake. He even revealed a little bit about the plot when he said that the protagonist this time would be a woman who would be in charge. She would try with all her might to save her family as they are threatened by the evil forces. 
The cast is still a mystery, but although Bruce Campbell's character has been recast, he would still make an appearance. The suspense of a group of regular people battling with invincible evil forces would be the highlight yet again. It will be directed by Lee Cronin, but we have no words for a formal release date as of now. If you have enjoyed the entertaining flicks from the franchise, you are probably just as eager as we are for the movie to hit the theaters. Okay, now I'm happy. Just read him his right and I'll stand over here being happy. Uh, uh, he's got a gun! <laughs> Lethal Weapon 5 The first Lethal Weapon movie told the story of Detective Martin Riggs, who is in a terrible mental state after losing his wife. He is partnered with Roger, and the duo shakes off their differences and takes on a huge drug trafficking ring. The reckless Riggs and the inexperienced Roger form a great team and apprehend some of the most hardened and dangerous criminals in Los Angeles. Lethal Weapon was a classic in the truest sense of the term. This entertaining buddy cop action drama had some of the biggest stars back then, such as Mel Gibson and Danny Glover, who play the protagonists. The interesting plot and intelligent characters soon caught on with the fans, and there were three sequels to the original that were released in a quick time. However, after Lethal Weapon 4 in 1998, there has been a lull of over 20 years. The long wait is about to end, as word has come in suggesting that Lethal Weapon 5 will happen soon. The director, Richard Donner, was initially skeptical about the fifth installment of the franchise, but the producer has recently revealed that the movie is on track to being made. He suggested that this would be the last movie in the series, and to make it special, they would retain the original cast. However, both Danny Glover and Mel Gibson are now too old to play such action-oriented roles. For now, all we know is that Richard Donner is working on the script and the makers are keen to have the original cast play their roles. Masters of the Universe The evil Skeletor is almost invincible and plans a takeover of the world. He has kidnapped a sorceress, and the only thing that stands between him and victory is the mighty He-Man. He, along with his friends, must rescue the sorceress and save the world from the evil plans of Skeletor. He-Man has been an emotional journey for us, and watching Dolph Lundgren flex his muscles as the mighty hero was overwhelming back in the day. With the remake being planned for Masters of the Universe, one of our first concerns was who gets the role of He-Man. So far, it has been announced that Noah Centineo would be playing the role, and he is reportedly training hard to bulk up sufficiently for the portrayal of He-Man. The change of direction would lie with Adam and Aaron Nee, and they would have to put in their best efforts for a cinematic revival of this classic superhero. Over time, we have seen games, movies, and cartoon shows about this character, and it is time to embrace the plot one more time. Hopefully, the makers will be able to do justice to the legacy of He-Man. Firestarter a couple participated in a medical experiment that was related to psychic abilities. Later, they have a daughter who is pyrokinetic, and this seems to be an effect of the experiments. The little girl can start fires by simply thinking about it, and the government takes a keen interest in her abilities. They kill her mother, but underestimate the lengths to which the father-daughter duo would go to protect each other. It is a face-off between the power of the gun and the power of the mind. Based on a story by Stephen King, this sci-fi horror movie was surprisingly impressive. The performance of young Drew Barrymore added spark to the fluent narrative. The relaunch of this engaging film is good news for many who have appreciated the innovative concept back in the day. Things became evident when Zac Efron got on board with a project that involves big names like Universal, Blumhouse, and Weed Road Productions. Keith Thomas will be the director, and the makers wish to recreate the popularity of the first movie in 1984. With an Oscar-winning producer, Akiva Goldsman, teaming up with Jason Blum, we expect nothing short of a mesmerizing movie on offer. Nothing but street grease, you hear? Street grease, you motherfucker! Is that gasoline I smell? No, man. No! 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 no. The Crow Eric is a small-time rock star, and his world falls apart when he and his fiancée are murdered. 
His restless soul is brought to the netherworld by a crow so that he can get his revenge on those who killed him. The crow takes him through the land of the living and guides him to the killers who are brought to justice by Eric. However, the leader of the killers learns about the legend of the crow and Eric's time on earth is limited. Can he get justice for his lover before it is too late? Besides being an entertaining flick, The Crow is also known for being the last work of the talented Brendan Lee who died in an accident during shooting for this film. From what we have gathered, the film is going for a reboot after being on the shelf for over a year. The film might be titled The Crow Reborn and it was initially supposed to be directed by Corin Hardy with Jason Momoa playing the lead role. The plan never materialized and Momoa left the project, leading to further delays. Currently, we hear that a new director would be roped in, although no word about the final selection has come in. Comic book adaptions aren't the easiest to implement, and for this remake that will come in the near future, we hope the makers stay true to the source. It is also important to cast the right actor for the pivotal role of Eric. Even with the follow-up movies and TV series, we just can't seem to get enough of the story. Scarface. Tony Montana starts from nowhere as an immigrant in the United States, and soon he makes it to the top of the drug empire. As a drug lord in Miami, he grows in power, but his enemies grow steadily as well. His ego grows, and he becomes blinded by power, which leads to some powerful people going against him. The rise and fall of Tony's drug empire has been brilliantly captured in this gripping crime drama. Scarface is probably amongst the best movies in this genre, and Al Pacino immortalized himself with a terrific performance as the protagonist. The sharp-minded, dangerous, and flawed crime lord was a character that you would love and hate. A reboot of this popular movie is on the cards, and it is in capable hands. The Oscar-nominated director Luca Guadagnino will be working with Universal Pictures to create the magic of the 80s one more time. He has been profusely praising the script and screenplay written by the Coen brothers and seems to be pretty excited about working on this project as his next venture. He has also hinted that the story will have a modern day relevance and elaborate on the current social climate. Michael B. Jordan is rumored to play the protagonist and he would have his task cut out, filling Al Pacino's shoes. We are waiting with bated breath to observe how this all-time classic is dealt with in today's times. You and Brain just say goodbye to each other. Escape from New York In a fictional world, crime has increased in leaps and bounds, and Manhattan has been transformed into a maximum security prison. The Air Force One carrying the President of the United States crashes in this region, and now he has to be rescued. The mission is assigned to a one-eyed bank robber who is new to prison life. If he could get the job done within 23 hours, then he would be granted a pardon. He must now set out in the dangerous city teeming with immoral criminals and save the president and his own life. Directed by John Carpenter with Kurt Russell in the lead, this movie was in a different league altogether. It might not be a bad idea to see more of this sci-fi action thriller and a remake is just what the doctor ordered. Lee Wennell has been dafted in to write the script for a remake of this 1981 classic. The main hero in this story is the one-eyed robber, and Wennell has some interesting suggestions as to who can take over the role. He wants the son of Kurt Russell, Wyatt Russell, to play the role. However, he might have said it in a jest, and no formal word has come in regarding the cast for the upcoming film. Given the popularity of the Kurt Russell hit, the makers would have to ensure that they perfect everything so that the fans are not disappointed with a new outing. I must complete my mission and return to Phelon. I don't want to go to Phelon. I want to go home. Navigator, I am awaiting your command. We must act now. Look, I gotta think. Just take us 20 miles from here. Compliance. Flight of the Navigator. A 12-year-old boy goes missing and reappears after eight years. He seems to have traveled into the future, and when he reappears, he hasn't aged at all. At the same time, when he comes back, a flying saucer is found, and David from NASA manages to connect with an alien ship. What adventures did the young boy have with the alien ship, or are they not related events at all? The attempts to remake the flight of the Navigator are almost as old as the movie itself. 
Since 2009, there has been an enthusiasm from filmmakers to get this movie rolling, and Disney handed the challenge to Colin Trevorrow, the man who directed Jurassic World. But Disney seems to have other priorities like the likes of Star Wars movies gaining prominence over this project. After all these years in the doldrums, the rights for the movie have been taken by Lionsgate and the Henson Company. If reports are offering any truth, then the showrunner of Lucifer, Joe Henderson, is working on the screenplay for the reboot. The story could be a new one with just a similar concept, and could also be somewhat of a sequel. We can't wait to see the magic that modern day special effects will add to this timeless classic. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.